Oh man, one of the coolest jobs anyone can have is being a fighter pilot. But there's a, there's a little bit of a problem with that job. It needs one hell of a resume for it. Which is why us mere plebeians need to settle for the next best thing. Virtual reality and DCS world. And that is why I want to show you how you can get the most out of your VR headset. And to do that, I'll be using not just any VR headset. Today, I will be using the Pimax Crystal Super. One of the highest fidelity VR headsets money can buy. And Pimax, well, they've graciously sent this to me to give you my first impressions with it. And not only that, they also told me there is a special event going on right now. So if you want a chance at getting a sweet deal on an awesome Pimax headset, check the description below for all the latest event details. Now of course you don't need a Pimax Crystal Super just to follow this video, so let's go over exactly what you need to know to get the most out of your setup. But just in case you had any doubts, let me show you exactly what you have to look forward to. This is the AH-64D Apache, one of the hardest hitting modules in DCS world, not just when it comes to attacking enemy forces, but also attacking your performance. And we're getting an insane amount of frames per second, which is nuts considering we're in virtual reality. But if you notice, uh, the graphics are actually kind of super low. So of course we are going to get a lot of frames per second. So let's fix that by blindly setting everything to the highest. And just like that, we go from this oh, to this. Whoa, this is amazing. At least that's what I would be saying if I wasn't getting 15 FPS. But honestly, no one should be surprised by that because obviously you're going to get this kind of performance if you just blindly set everything to the max. So that, of course, begs the question, what happens if we properly tune our system? Well, this is what we get. And now, I, I hear you saying it, wow, nothing's changed, huh? And, well, that's kind of the point. Despite things not changing very much, we are getting a very playable 70 plus FPS, which is right around five times more than the maximum settings, and we can barely tell the difference. This is crazy, and in fact, it's so crazy that I want to show you exactly how you can get this too with your own system. And best of all, I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible. So if you're the type who just wants to copy and paste, well, here are all my settings. Go ahead and pause the video and just simply copy and paste and see how that does for you. Now there's no guarantee it'll work because keep in mind I'm running a 4090, so these settings may not work for you. So for anyone who has stuck around to this point, let me explain what settings you need to adjust based on your system specs, starting with textures. Depending on how much VRAM your video card has, you will have to choose one of these three options, low, medium, or high. And the way I generally break this down is, if you have a graphics card with less than 8 gigabytes of VRAM, then you want to choose low. If you have a video card that is somewhere around 8 gigabytes of VRAM to up to probably 12 or 16, then you should be pretty safe with choosing medium. But if you have something like a 4090 with 20 plus gigabytes of VRAM, well then you could just go straight to high. Now very similar to textures is terrain textures just below that, and there's only two options, either low or high. And the way I break this down is, if you're choosing low for textures, then just choose low for terrain textures. If you're choosing medium for textures, then choose either low or high, depending on if you have 8 gigabytes of VRAM or more than 8 gigabytes of VRAM. Then of course, just like before, if you chose high textures, then just simply choose high terrain textures since you have plenty of VRAM on your graphics card. And for the next setting, it's going to be preload radius. And this will depend on how much RAM you have. My rule of thumb for this is if you have 64 gigabytes of RAM, then you'll want to set this to 64,000. Or if you have 32 gigabytes of RAM, then well, guess what? You'll want to set this to 32,000. And then if you have 16, then 16,000. If you have eight, God rest your soul, then choose 8,000. Now, of course, this isn't guaranteed to work, but if you ever find 
find that DCS is just crashing when it's loading a mission or a multiplayer server, then chances are your preload radius is too high. Now, there is technically one more hardware specific setting, but we'll touch on that later. What I want to cover next is all the settings that you are free to either turn down or turn off, depending on if you want to squeeze out that little bit of extra performance. Now, I'm not saying you should touch all of these, like you shouldn't be going in and turning every single one of these off or down, only turn down the stuff you're willing to sacrifice. For example, are you someone who likes to have massive visibility? Well, you'll probably want to keep that on high, but maybe you can live with shadows not being high and instead even being low. So just play around with these settings until you get a picture that you're okay with. Also, if you want to know what each of these settings actually do, let me know in the comments and I can think about making a video that will go over each one of these and show you exactly how that affects the picture you're seeing in DCS. Now, everything up until this point has been talking about quality of the image. However, what we haven't touched on is the clarity of the image. And to do that, let's go to the VR tab. And for this, it is going to be very, very simple. All we're going to focus on is the pixel density slider. Now, if you notice, I actually have this at 0.9 and you're probably thinking to yourself, Tuvas, why are you lowering the pixel density? Don't you want to be able to see what the heck you're doing? Well, I want to let you know that of all the people I've helped tune their settings and there have been many, every single one of them, have always been surprised with just how little pixel density they are happy to live with. And the way I like to explain this is, imagine three dials in front of you. Quality, clarity, and performance. Do you want to turn up your quality dial? Well, be prepared to turn down the clarity dial. Or maybe you have a preference for clarity. Well, I guess you're gonna have to live with turning down the quality dial. Or maybe you want both. Well, guess what? You're going to have to suffer lower performance as a result. But maybe you're the kind of person who wants all three. Well, guess what? You're gonna have to pay for better hardware. Now, that said, there is technically a couple magic bullets you could potentially use, but I kind of hesitate calling these magic bullets because really you're just letting the system turn the dials in ways that you hopefully can't comprehend. So it's really more of a magic trick than a magic bullet. And the first of these tricks is going to be something I kind of alluded to earlier, and that is DLSS and by association, DLAA. Now that being said, there are more options here than just DLSS. We also have FSR and NIS. However, in my experience, DLSS is the only option that is even worth using. And even then, I actually prefer to not use DLSS personally and only opt to use the anti-aliasing option, which is DLAA. And honestly, even then, there's, there's still some trade-offs here. But just to cover DLSS, you will need an RTX style NVIDIA graphics card in order to use this. But not only that, you will also want to create an auto exec config file in this directory. So make sure you create it with this preset set inside the file. That way you can use the latest and greatest preset to get the most out of your upscaling option of DLSS, assuming of course you can use it in the first place. Also, while we're still here in the auto exec config file, we also want to add this, the HUD MFD after DLSS equals true. This will remove any kind of ghosting that you might see in your MFD while using DLSS and DLAA. So go ahead and give DLSS a shot and see if it truly is the magic bullet you're looking for. Maybe it'll give you that one extra bit of push to maintain your current clarity and quality while also simultaneously getting FPS back. Now, there is one more magic bullet that I'm willing to explore with you guys because it's had actually some pretty good reception in the past. However, it does require a decent CPU and that is quad views. It unlocks the secret sauce, the hidden weapon that is honestly the closest thing to a true magic bullet, especially in a VR headset like the Pimax Crystal Super, which has eye tracking enabled. And that is dynamic foveated rendering. And all that means is no matter where you look, the center of your vision is always going to be rendered at maximum resolution, while everything in your periphery is going to be rendered at a lower resolution, bringing back a ton of performance with basically no noticeable negative effect. Except for situations that I kind of alluded to when I said you needed a decent CPU because anything that is CPU heavy is gonna take a noticeable hit thanks to quad views. For example, in this dogfight, I'm getting a 
noticeably higher frames per second compared to without quad views. But when I'm sitting here on the runway start mission in the Apache, my performance actually goes down instead of going up. So while the technology of eye tracking is promising, it is still not quite the perfect magic bullet we all want. And that just about wraps up this guide. But before we go, please make sure to check out the description for an affiliate link if you happen to be in the market for a brand new Pimax Crystal headset. Any purchases made through that link will give me a little bit of kickback and you'll be able to get a little bit of a discount yourself. Also, let me know in the comments down below if any of this guide has helped you tune your settings or maybe I missed something. Maybe there was something very crucial that I failed to go over. Let me know down below and maybe I'll cover it for a few video. But until then, thank you all for watching and have a nice day.